A new survey shows the Holocaust is being forgotten. As Fox 66's Stephanie Parkinson explains tonight, that is giving survivors an even bigger reason to speak up. Steph? Bill, these stats are really shocking to anyone who knows the horror Jews experienced in the 1940s. The Conference on Jewish Material Claims Against Germany survey reveals 49% of millennials cannot name a single Nazi concentration camp, yet 6 million Jews died. All of this is why survivors like retired U of M professor Irene Butter keeps finding new ways to share her story in hopes of educating people so nothing like the Holocaust ever happens again. It's my brother and myself. Now 88 years old, surrounded by colorful and vibrant art in her serene Ann Arbor home. It's a stark contrast for this mother, grandmother, and soon-to-be great-grandmother as she recounts the most traumatic and difficult year of her life. In the 1940s, just because she was Jewish, Irene was segregated, enslaved, and tortured during the Holocaust in Nazi-occupied Europe. <laughs> Every morning you wake up, there were you were surrounded by people who died in the night. Before being taken prisoner, Irene was just a kid living in Berlin where she was born. But when she was six, her father's bank was taken by Nazis. So he took his family and fled to Amsterdam. My parents thought that we would be safe in the Netherlands. We, we didn't go far enough. Six years later, the Nazis came for them. We ended up in a camp called Bergen-Belsen. At age 12, too young for manual labor, Irene was tasked with cleaning the barracks and washing her family's clothing. There wasn't any hot water. There wasn't any soap. The conditions were um, atrocious, you know. All we had is one bowl of soup in the evening, which was water and turnips and a pe one piece of bread like this. A horrible situation Irene knew could have been much worse if she would have ended up in Nazi-occupied Poland. A train came every week from Auschwitz. Camp inmates had to clean the train and they found notes that had indicated what was happening in Auschwitz. Those notes insinuating Jews were being murdered in mass, being put in gas chambers, burned alive. And Monday night, they, the barrack leaders would um, turn on the light and read the list of names of people who had to go on the train. If it wasn't for her father's foresight, it's likely Irene's name would have been called. We were very fortunate. My father managed to get Ecuador, Ecuadorian passports. We were not sent to Auschwitz because we had those passports. Those falsified passports allowed the Nazis to trade them for German prisoners, which is how her and her family were able to board a train to Switzerland. Everyone was so sick, you know. It was difficult to, to even grasp the joy. Her father died on the second night out of the camp. Irene was sent on to a refugee camp in North Africa. And we got clean clothing, we had beds with sheets, uh, we had three meals a day, and we had freedom. We could leave the camp anytime. This as the war raged on. But in July of 1944, U.S. forces liberated the concentration camps. Eventually, Irene, her mother, and brother were all able to move to New York City. I never talked about my background. It just wasn't talked about. Almost immediately, Irene went back to school, earned her doctorate, started a family of her own, and had a successful career, but then decided it was time to share her story. It's my responsibility because I am here. And so I started talking. Fifteen years ago, Irene documented her story at the Holocaust Memorial Center in Farmington Hills. We were taken from place to place and eventually... Even movie director Steven Spielberg has documented her journey. And through this process of sharing her story, she's been able to reacquaint herself with her home country. I resented the language, even though my mother, of course, continued to speak the language. Irene has since visited Germany, talking to students and making peace with her past. So it, it was... Um, it was quite a journey. Although he's not here with her today, Irene knows her father is the reason she's alive. Yeah, well, he was my hero. 
Yes, he, he did everything possible to save us. I hope he would be proud of me. I think he would be. Amazing story, amazing woman. It definitely, most definitely, Bill. Beyond the videos, we understand that Irene has taken it another step now to keep that story alive. Huh? She has, Bill. She, she's written a book, Shores Beyond Shores, From Holocaust to Hope. Now, Irene tells me what this will do for her story is help to tell it when she can't anymore. And there's a weekend a book tour this weekend here in Michigan? Yes, she's kind of launching the big book tour here since she released it. She wants to do it here in Michigan. This is her home and always has been, you know, since she was... Um, most for adulthood, I guess. Well, so she is going to be at the Holocaust Memorial Center. That is in Farmington Hills. She will be there at 3.15 on Sunday afternoon to sign those books and to answer questions and talk to people. Thank you, and thank you, Irene, for sharing that story.